So this video is all to do with graphs, finding the gradient at particular points on a graph, finding the area underneath the graph, and then working out how to use that to answer questions to do with speed and time, velocity, that kind of stuff. So reasonably popular questions in the new GCSE exam, so well worth practicing. And as ever, you can practice these questions over at mathskitchen.com. There's a link in the description below. So you can do the questions that I go through in the video, as well as a bank of other questions for you to practice as well. So I would very much encourage you to do that. Um, if you need to just jump to a particular point in a video, you can see the questions on the screen there. So you can follow the link in the description just to a particular point in the video if that's useful for you. Um, right, let's have a look at the first question. So we're given the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x add 1 and we're being asked to find the gradient of the graph when x is equal to 3. So we need to find that point on the graph where x is equal to 3 when we're at 3 on the x-axis. In other words, that is that point there. And then we need to draw a straight line that is a tangent to that point. So you could imagine that as the straight line kind of balancing on that curve. Now if you're doing this with pen and paper, you just use a ruler and a pencil or a pen. Um, and you just draw that line in. If you're using the website, you would just click once on the point there, and then you click a second time anywhere else, and it will create that line for you. And if you're happy with that, you're done. But you might want to adjust it. You can just drag that point that you just clicked on. You can move it around until you've got the line that you're happy with. Now, when we're asked to find the gradient, the gradient is just the steepness of the line, okay? So we describe the steepness as how many units up we, we go compared with how many units across. Okay, we talk about the change in the y coordinate over the change in the x coordinate. So choose two points on your line that are where you can read off the coordinates nice and easily. I'm going to select these two because it's really easy to see what the difference is in the x and y coordinates between those two points. I've gone across one, you know, one unit, and I've gone up. 4. Okay, so the gradient of that line is 4 over 1. It's the change in the y coordinate over the change in x. So 4 over 1, that's just the same as 4, isn't it? So the gradient of this line is 4, and therefore we would say that the gradient of the graph at that point is 4. Although you notice the question says estimate because we've just drawn that line in. So we may have been slightly inaccurate. Um, we can't say with 100% certainty that it is precisely 4. So it's an estimate. But nonetheless, we found the gradient of the graph when x is equal to 3. The diagram below shows an example of a distance time graph, and we're being asked to give the most useful interpretation of the gradient at a point on the distance time graph. So this skill comes up quite often in the GCSE exam where you're asked to interpret what the gradient means that, you know, for a particular graph. You won't get three questions in a row like this. It will be part of a larger question, but nonetheless, a really useful skill for you to understand and to practice. We're talking about distance and time. So if we had a really steep line, that would suggest that we're covering a great distance in a small amount of time. In other words, that tells us that we're going fast, you know, we've got a high speed. If we had a very shallow line, so a smaller gradient, that would suggest it's taking us a longer time to cover the same distance. In other words, we're going slower. So the steepness of that line, which is what the gradient is, could be interpreted as speed. But generally speaking, the gradient is always going to indicate for you, you know, how quickly one thing is changing compared to another. The diagram below shows a velocity time graph and we're being asked what the most useful interpretation of the gradient at a point on that graph is. Well, velocity is very similar to speed. So the gradient of this line is showing us how quickly something is accelerating. A very steep line, we've got something that's accelerating quickly. And a very shallow line, we've got something that's, you know, accelerating slowly. So it's acceleration. The final one, the diagram below shows a graph of the volume of water in a bucket as it leaks out over time. Okay, so what's the most useful interpretation? So the two things that are being compared there is the volume of water in the bucket over a period of time. If it was a really steep line, that would suggest that the volume of water is decreasing very quickly and a shallow line the volume of water is decreasing quite slowly. So the steepness of that line is all to do with showing us how quickly 
the volume changes. So in other words, it indicates the rate of change of volume. The diagram below shows part of the graph of y equals 6 at 5x minus x squared, and then we're being asked to work out an estimate for the area under the part of the graph which is shown. So this is a pretty typical exam question where you're asked to do this. Um, so it says to estimate, that doesn't just mean to sort of have a bit of a guess, it means to use as accurate a method as you can, but to understand that it's, it's not going to be 100% perfect. And the method we're expected to use with this is to break up that shape underneath the graph into polygons, which we can find the area of. So if you're using pen and paper, you could just draw those shapes on. If you're using the website, you can click at each end of each side of your polygon. So I'll click here and here to give me that first side. And then I'm gonna click here and here to draw in that second side and then here and here. Then I've got my first shape drawn on, a trapezium. I'll do the same for the second shape which will be another trapezium, and then we'll have a triangle for the third one. So you can see our shapes don't match exactly the curve that we've been given, do they? That's why it's going to be an estimate. But all we have to do now is find the area of each of those shapes. So this first one, the width is two, and it's got a height of, the left-hand side has a height of six, the right-hand side has a height of 12. So to find the area of a trapezium, you add the six and the 12 together, and you divide it by two, and then you multiply that by the width. I always think of it as essentially just finding the average between the six and the 12. So six out of 12 is 18, we'll divide that by two, which is nine, and well, and then we'll multiply it by two, with it, which is the width, so that would be 18. So the area for that first one is 18. The area for the second one, it's also got a width of two, and the, the two heights that were given are 12, and that looks like 10 to me. Okay, so 10 add 12 is 22. If we do half of that, that's 11. Multiply that by the width, which is two. So that's 22. So the area of that one is 22. Uh, and then the final one, we've got a triangle with a base of two and a height of 10. So half base times height. So one times 10, it's 10, isn't it? Then all we've got to do is add those three areas together. So 18, Add 22, which is 40, add on the 10, that is 50. So 50 units squared. And then the follow-up to that, which of the following is true for this approach, that the answer overestimates the area, underestimates the area, or gives the actual area. Well, the area that we calculated is actually slightly smaller. You know, we didn't include all of that space underneath the curve, did we? So it's an underestimate. Diagram below shows part of the velocity time graph for a falling object and estimate the distance traveled by the object during the first 20 seconds using four strips of equal width. Now, the thing you need to know with a velocity time graph is that to find the distance traveled, all you need to do is find the area underneath the graph, and that tells you the distance traveled. So we're gonna do this as accurately as we can, even though it says estimate, it doesn't mean just have a guess, it means you know work it out as accurately as you can, but understand that that is not going to be perfect. So use strips, four strips of equal width, so, and we're going between zero and 20, so each strip is gonna have a width of five, five seconds, um, and all we've got to do is work out the area of each of those shapes underneath the curve. So if you're using pen and paper, you could just draw those shapes on. If you're using the website, you just click at each end of each side of your shape. So I click there and there, there and there. So we've got a triangle as a first shape, I'll quickly draw the other ones on, so we're going to end up with more trapeziums. And then once you've got that, you've just got to work out the area of each of those shapes, and we're going to add them together. So the first one is a triangle, so half base times height, so 5 times 25, which is 125, and it's going to be half of that, so 62 and a half. And then we've got a trapezium, where Essentially, we take the average of the, the two parallel sides. So we've got 25 and 40. So that's 65. Half of that will be 22 and a half multiplied by the width there, multiplied by 5. That's going to be 112.5. The next trapezium uh, also has a width of 5, and then it's got a height on the left-hand side of 40 and on the right-hand side of 50. So we take the halfway point between those, or if you like, you could think of it, we're going to add them together 
which is 90 and halve it you get the same you know so you get the same answer so 45 multiplied by that width of 5 that's 225 then we've got this final trapezium also has a width of 5 and it's got a height on the left hand side of 50 and on the right hand side of 55 so the average of those two is 52.5 multiplied by 5 that gives us an area of 262.5 all we've got to do now is add those together that adds up to 712 and a half so there you go that is all to do with graphs gradient and area under graphs and answering GCSE exam questions to do with that hope you found it useful as with everything it's really helpful to do a bit of practice you can do that over at the website and we hope we've made a nice kind of easy way for you to practice these sorts of questions um, any questions that you have you can leave them in the comments below I read them all I'm very happy to answer any questions that you might have um, and if you found the video useful please give it a little like or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, check out some of the other videos and I look forward to seeing you again